the panic attack that brought me to my knees would change the way I viewed money forever. Let me take it back to 2016 when I bought my first home. Everything leading up to it looked perfect, but I was experiencing a lot of turmoil and unrest behind the paper thin walls. I thought I had it good. I had no bad debt. I had some money in savings. I just landed my dream job to teach at the Air Force Academy. And I was even going to make some extra money renting out the empty bedrooms in my new home. But lurking behind the scenes was a lot of unhealthy money patterns and behaviors I couldn't explain and had a hard time making sense of. In my 20s, I hoarded the little money I had all in cash. And I was also scared to contribute to my retirement during that time period. In fact, according to CNBC, 41% of Americans do not contribute to their employer-sponsored retirement plan. And deep down, a lot of that is driven primarily by a mindset of scarcity and fear. I feel more secure having a firm grip on my money, but having to let go of that for my home expenses caused me an immense amount of anxiety. My entire world came crashing down on me two days after I closed on my home when I suffered the most horrific panic attack of my life. And I had no clue what was coming. Heart rate through the roof, crippling anxiety. I felt trapped and didn't even feel safe in my own body. I remember sitting on my stool in the kitchen, crying with my head down, wondering if I was gonna make it out alive. After doing some life-changing work, I realized that the pain was triggered by my subconscious fear of the unknown that was deeply rooted in my childhood. Regardless of what your financial situation is, whether you're living paycheck to paycheck or you're a multimillionaire, we all have emotional and behavioral money dynamics we aren't even aware of. So I'm here to tell you this, you're not bad with money. You're not bad with money. Nobody inherently is. And not only are you not bad with money, you're not alone in your money, stress, and pain. There is, however, something from your past that is hidden deep in your subconscious, which is impacting how you behave with money today. And a lot of these patterns were hardwired into your brain during your early childhood years, before you even had a say in the matter. But here's the good news. There is a way forward. So what's going on here? Imagine where you'd like to be financially in the future. And this is the path you're going to take to get there. A lot of what you see when it comes to money is very practical, like budgeting, not spending more than what you make, and making sure that you put enough money away for retirement. It requires a level of understanding what to do and being able to execute on it. However, as you're on this journey, you're going to crash into what I call the invisible barrier. It's the emotional side of money. It's a mental barrier in your head a fog of sorts that's preventing you from seeing your future clearly and from moving closer to where you want to be in the future. It's invisible because you don't even know it's there. My invisible barrier was my subconscious fear of the unknown that was deeply rooted in my childhood. And this is what was behind the panic attack a few days after I closed on my home. As a young boy, I remember being fearful of not knowing what was going to happen next when my dad lost his job. And again, when my parents couldn't afford to pay rent and the threat of eviction was looming over our heads. This is why I hoarded so much of my money in cash in my 20s. The University of Cambridge did a fascinating study. 
they determined that a lot of our core money habits and behaviors are formed and set by the time we turn seven years old. This lines up with the fact that our subconscious minds are formed and shaped during these early years. I subconsciously developed a strong disposition of fear around money from a young age, and I didn't even know it. This is what I carried into adulthood. So why do so many of us struggle to make sound money decisions as adults? It's first important to understand that our own minds are often working against us. If I had to break down the brain and how it's used in decision-making, 70% of our decisions are rooted in the subconscious mind, 25% in the reactive mind, and only 5% in the active thinking mind. We actually have a very logical mind, but the problem is we rarely use it. The problem actually lies in our subconscious mind because it's infected with files from past trauma, formative experiences, early influences, and exposures. And throughout your life, these emotions and experiences become hardwired into your brain. Think of your brain as an operating system. And if it has a glitch, it's going to run sporadically and not do what you want it to do. And these glitches are often rooted deep in your subconscious mind, which is formed from a very young age, similar to what I experienced as a child growing up. You want to be good with money. You want to hit your financial goals. You want to experience financial freedom but you continue to struggle because your brain has other intentions that are tied deeply to your subconscious. And until you dig deep and understand how and why you got there, your operating system will continue to struggle. Your subconscious mind acts as a blind spot. It's there, but you don't even realize it. You may not remember everything from the first seven years of your life, but your body does. And it did for me when the lurking fear came up to the surface. What is one way for you to identify your invisible barrier? One way to do it is to dig deep and understand why you spend the way you do. It's important to understand the difference between healthy spending versus unhealthy spending and why that unhealthy spending is happening in the first place. Your spending is more than just numbers on a piece of paper. It's telling you a story. So when you have a chance, grab your bank statement from at least three months ago. The reason for the three month break is to let the emotional high from your purchases subside. You're then going to go through your bank statement three different times, each time asking a different question. The first question you're going to ask yourself is, do any of these transactions come as a surprise to me? Because if you do not remember buying it, you need to highlight it. The second question is, do any of these transactions come with any level of guilt or shame with it? If you answer yes, you need to highlight it. And the final question is, was I able to live without this before? If you answer yes, you need to highlight it. Now, as you take a step back, you're going to look at your bank statement and see transactions that have highlights and transactions that don't. The transactions that don't have highlights can be considered a core essential need to your day-to-day -day living. The transactions that do will require a little more investigating. So what now? The first course of action is to look inward and to dig deep and get the root cause behind why you spent the way you did. Your answer is not going to be obvious up front and something you wouldn't want to admit publicly. And it's also important to acknowledge your emotions during this time. Remember how you felt during that time of purchase and even ask yourself, what unmet emotional need was I trying to protect by spending money on this? And once you've got your response to your first why, 
you're going to then peel back each layer of the onion and dig five layers deep till you get to your final why, which is your root cause. The root reason behind our unhealthy money patterns and behaviors commonly stems from our need for approval, our need for comfort, our need for control, and our need for power. And these will manifest itself anywhere between extreme fear to extreme greed. This is your invisible barrier. And it's all done at the subconscious level and you need to tear it down. So what is one way we can identify and overcome your invisible barrier together? It's first important to do some investigative work and dig into your money history to see where the negative thoughts and beliefs are coming from. What stories have you been telling yourself? Is, it, is there evidence to back it up? Is it relevant and accurate? And once you've done this, it's important to then heal from the wound. And part of the healing process means your willingness to forgive. Not just forgiving others, but forgiving yourself. True forgiveness happens when your emotions no longer want justice. Let me say that again. True forgiveness happens when your emotions no longer want justice. And once you've done this, you could then start to naturally distance yourself from the pain and emotion that once had control over your life. You will then be able to freely implement new habits and start gaining confidence around money so you can see yourself thrive. I no longer am fearful of the unknown because I was able to overcome my invisible barrier. It's no longer a weight that is bringing me down. What I have asked of you to do, I have done. It has made me realize the source and the solution to my past money challenges and freed me on a path to walk with joy and abundance. So my friends, you're not bad with money. You can actually be very good with money. What you need to do is bring the subconscious barriers that were standing in your way to the conscious level so you can tear them down. And as you're on your money journey, combine the emotional aspects of money with the practical aspects of money. And when you do this, my friends, you will be able to live the life you want to live and embrace your future money goals and dreams without anything holding you back.